Today, in our liturgical calendar, we commemorate Joseph, husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When I was a school chaplain, I often took the opportunity to transfer the commemoration of a saint to our Sunday worship, for it was an opportunity in an age when people's heroes are more likely to be celebrities, sports stars and reality television and social media personalities, for the students to learn about those who have made a difference to the building up of the kingdom of God and the spreading of the good news that is Jesus Christ. Christian heroes, if you will. Recently, I preached at a service for people considering whether or not God was calling them to the ordained ministry. And the commemoration set for the service was that of St. Joseph. It pondered, I pondered, what the life and witness of Joseph might have to say to them, and by association to all of us in understanding our ministry, be that lay or clerical. But Joseph is not mentioned in any of the Pauline letters, the oldest extant Christian writings, or the Gospel of St. Mark, the, fir the first Gospel to be written. He principally appears in the Gospels of St. Matthew and St. Luke, being mentioned but once in the Gospel of St. John. While in both accounts of St. Matthew and St. Luke, Joseph has a genealogy showing through him Jesus' ancestry from King David, they follow different familial lines to achieve their aim. There are some striking differences between the Gospel accounts of Jesus' infancy also. Nonetheless, Joseph does play a significant part in each of them. Joseph's final appearance in the canonical gospel, he appears quite regularly in other materials, is in the narrative of the Passover visit to the temple in Jerusalem when Jer Je Jesus is 12 years old, and that story is found only in St. Luke. For those who like statistics, Joseph appears 13 times in the gospels. Only three times are the stories in two gospels, genealogy, birth, Joseph and family settling in Nazareth. And the only reference outside of Matthew and Luke, as I said, is in the Gospel of St. John, when we hear the story of the locals grumbling about Jesus making claims about being the bread coming down from heaven, because as the locals say, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? As well as this background, he is much venerated in art, the church, by the church fathers, and Joseph enjoys a wide range of feast days and patronages to his honour. On the occasion of my address, I proffered the question, what does remembering the witness of Joseph say to those contemplating the call of God on their lives? It reminds us that we never know when it might be that God has a special or particular ministry for us. I do not imagine Joseph had any idea what occurred to him was to happen. It speaks also to a willingness on our part to be open and obedient to God's will in the call that he makes upon our lives and made on Joseph's life. One can only imagine that Joseph must have wondered how and why he was involved and what had led to this call. As we know, Joseph was obedient and dutiful to God's call. The Joseph story is a good reminder that our call to any form of ministry is not about us. It is about doing the will of God, being part of God's plan. As the so-called Romero prayer says, we plant seeds that one day will grow. We water the seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will, never, that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realising that. This enables us to do something and to do it well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning a step along the way, an opportunity for God's grace to enter and do the rest. 
we may never see the end results. But that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. As we know from the gospel accounts, Joseph had his moments of significance and is no longer part of the story by the time of Jesus' recorded ministry. We can but imagine he had died. Nonetheless, this does not detract from the importance of his particular role and ministry. In the history of the church, there are those whose ministry and witness will be remembered forever. Just as importantly, we should acknowledge that the many more people who are remembered of their time and place by those of their time and place. In this regard, I think of an excerpt from Robert Bolt's play, A Man for All Seasons, when Thomas More, having suggested to Richard Rich to be a teacher, Rich responds somewhat despondently, but who will know? Thomas More's reply should be an inspiration to us, as was the life and witness of St. Joseph. You, God, your friends, not a bad public, that. Might our Lenten journey assist us to know God's call on our lives just as clearly?